our series on the great I am. Someone say the great I am. Today is Jehovah Rohi, and I have chosen the statement, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Can I get an amen? I will tell you this morning, I may get out of the gate fast and close fast, but my heart is to speak to you as a pastor this morning. My heart is tender and burdened to speak to you as a pastor. So if I resort to some of my old ways and just try to be a pastor and just to minister to you, I pray that you will receive it in his name. Can you say amen? A familiar passage, Psalms 23, that's probably on your wall or your grandmother quoted it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in he leads me beside, he restores, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over from your love. Your goodness and your mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Isaiah 40, the word of the Lord says, Behold, the Lord God will come. With a strong hand and his arms shall rule before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm. And he will carry them in his bosom. And he shall gently lead those who are young. This is King Jesus. Before I pray, Thursday before Queen for a day, um, Renee, I had a, um, I was walking in my garden and, talking to the Lord and immediately the Lord just thundered a word of knowledge to me which he has to do to bypass all of my stuff can I get an amen and he said King Jesus will be seen the train of his robe will fill this place his radiant glory will be seen among you he was speaking of Queen for a day and of this church he will step up to the plate and with a grand slam, he will hit it out of the ballpark and he himself will honor heaven. So the greater glory will be seen that will surpass the glory before. For this is what the Lord says. Favor is not the amount of things you have. Favor is not the car you drive. Favor is not the clothes on your back. But this is how the Lord told me he viewed favor and it wrecked me. Favor is when you overcome with grace, strength, and glory what others thought you could not overcome. When they see his strength in you and they see his might in you, that is when they say, that is a man favored by God and that is a woman favored by God. Can you give him a hand clap of praise? I didn't know when he said that I'm going to pray. I didn't know that the person to speak at closing of Queen for a day was going to cancel on me like four hours later and I would be put in a rush to fill that spot. I won't go into that. But King Jesus set me up and he tricked me into telling my story. Come on, someone. He said, I want you to tell a story. This is the shepherd that leads us. And I want you to tell it. I said, okay, I'll tell Lindsay Doss's story. That's who canceled, Karen Wheaton's daughter. He goes, no, 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 no. I want you to tell a story about an 18-year-old girl walking in the rain in Southern California, married to a coke addict. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. He said, no, tell the story, but don't say it's you. And I said, and when? And this sounds like me and God having a constant dialogue. Trust me, these moments are rare. Can I get an amen? Then he said, Tell who it is at this point. Are you sure? He said, I'm absolutely sure. That's where you tell it. And I'm going to tell you, I woke up that morning, and that's what I feel this morning, hearing an old song, Pastor Connie. You remember it. The king is coming. The king is coming. It's about the rapture. And so I sat up, and I thought, this is the day. We've worked hard for Queen for Day, but we're all going up today. <laughs> then I got a sense that's not what he was saying. He goes, no, 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 no. 
Remember that word I gave you two days ago? The king is coming in the midst of his people today. The king is coming. His train will fill the place. And many shall be the salvations. Little did I know that would be the most record salvations we've ever had in the history of Queen for a Day since 1994. Come on, somebody. The king is coming for you today. Look at someone and say, the king is coming. Father, we welcome your Holy Spirit. This is your room, Holy Spirit. King Jesus, this is your church. I'm merely a facilitator at this time. This church belongs to you, King. You promised me you walk among this church. You survey it. That in my weakness, you are so powerful and strong. King Jesus, come in your glory and your power and do what only you can do and pick us up in our faith to the glory of the Father and to your name, King Jesus. And the church said, amen, amen. The Lord is your shepherd, Jehovah Rohi. He has chosen you and that gives you a place of security. Others may not choose, but he chooses. He protects us. When wolves come for us, when we feel lost, I submit to you today, when you feel out of sorts and out of place, it's because you need time with King Jesus because he is your shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, but who is the Lord? Does he have adequate credentials to be my manager and my owner? Our vision of him is often too small, too cramped, too provincial, too provincial, too human. This struggle, this tug of war has gone on between the ages and the greatest of greats have wrestled is he worthy to lead me the water walkers those that did great exploits in his name were caught in that tug of war is he worthy to be my shepherd does he have credentials to lead me can I get an amen so God often reminds us in Job 38 he says to Job where were you when I laid the foundations of the universe you see I I've seen foundations of houses laid, but I've never seen the foundation of the universe. Can you imagine, Pastor Todd? That would take a cement mixer the size of the Western Hemisphere. Can I get an amen? When God laid the foundations of Argentina to the Antarctica, to Iceland, to Korea, to the southernmost parts of the tribes of Africa, this is a God that knows how to command the morning sun to come out. The Bible says he drives darkness out and brings his light. This is the God who says, I alone know where the gates of death and hell is. This is the God that says to you and I, can I be your shepherd? Will you tell me, can you take the light and the darkness and take it to its home? Can you make the horse rise up like a locust and prance and when the battle cry goes, the horse rushes into battle? Can you make the ostrich so dumb that she lays her eggs on the ground to be stopped but then when she hears something she jumps up and the Bible says she runs so fast she passes the swiftest warrior on a horse this is the Lord Jehovah Rohi this is your shepherd who created something out of nothing he can be trusted he is worthy he is God and he alone shall be praised can you give him a shout of praise this morning whenever doubt presses you and these things come against you remind yourself of Jeremiah 29 11 and make a u-turn I was on the greenway one day and they were doing a race for some disease and they put a u-turn and said Jeremiah 29 11 and I thought it was so good because when you get into a point that you question his credentials make a u-turn and go back to the book make a u-turn and go back to praise make a u-turn and go back and declare Jehovah Rohi you don't have to remember that word you can call him Rahad if you want to but he is the Lord your shepherd and he is to be trusted can you say amen when you question his credentials remember that in Colossians 1 it says that he is divinely responsible for creation of all things for Paul said by him all things were created things visible and things invisible things you can see and things you can't see for by him and through him are all things and my favorite and in him 
all things hold together. So when I feel like I'm falling apart, Jesus puts me back together. When I feel like I don't know who I am, Jesus puts me back together. Oh, Pastor Rhonda, how do I know sometimes what you face? Because it comes knocking at my door first. But he is the king, Jehovah Rohi, that can put us back together. Someone say hallelujah. Pastor Hank and I love to go to Hawaii. Uh, Courtney and Michael are going soon, and Dean and Debbie. But one thing we would go is go out to Pearl Harbor. And Pastor Hank and I are always mesmerized by the blood and grit of the veterans that gave their lives wherever we go, whether that's D.C. memorials. And we stand there fascinated. But then Pastor Hank started this thing. If you never knew him, when he got to thinking, he would, I miss seeing him sit on the couch of cracking his knuckles and drinking his coffee while his eyes were far off because he was getting something there at Pearl Harbor. He was lost. And I said, what is it, honey? He goes, there's the name Davis on this wall of Pearl Harbor, meaning some of my people died here. And I thought, that's beautiful. And then to much dismay of all the onlookers at Pearl Harbor, Pastor Hank begins to preach a message. And he says, all these people, I mean, it never stopped him. Oh, and the louder he got, the more they listened. All these people that were drowned at sea from here and all over the world and their bodies were decomposed sharks came and opened them up everybody's about to get nauseated right near and then fish and crabs ate them and they carried them to other seas and the salmon carried it this way and the mahi mahi carried it this way and the sharks he said all these particles all this DNA is spread but he who holds all things together the Bible says one day he shall descend with a shout and with the voice of the trumpet and when he does the dead in Christ shall rise meaning if Uncle Bob on the fourth side's DNA is scattered all over the oceans all over the world all those molecules all that DNA all those particles will come back together again he can even put the dead back together again but he can put us back together again give him praise his voice is so strong Josh that that's why he said Lazarus if he had not said Lazarus and just said at the grave of Lazarus come forth all the dead would have risen all over the world Pastor Hank had a sermon called the voice that will wake the dead oh how I love that as we traveled the world evangelizing the voice that will wake the dead is the same voice Jehovah Rohi my shepherd when I can't reconcile things back together Colossians 1 and 2 says he reconciled us back to himself through his blood on Calvary give him a shout of praise he said I am the good shepherd who gave his life for my sheep I love that Jehovah Rohi he does not slumber or sleep the Lord my shepherd he does not I studied a lot of shepherds I'll tell you a little takeaway when we're done but I studied a lot of Christian shepherds Philip Keller wrote a classic in 1970 about the shepherd and the sheep because he was a shepherd and a lot of my information about the sheep or the little bit I have is from him but he talked about how shepherds would sleep with one eye open shepherds would sleep with a staff in their hand or a gun and a flashlight depending upon the generation you're born into but I love that your Jehovah your shepherd he does not slumber or sleep he does not need to take time for a vacation weekend means nothing to him the Bible says the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the earth to show himself strong in behalf of his people I thank God that our shepherd doesn't have to keep one eye open because he never shuts his eye he never slumbers or sleeps the Lord who made the heavens and the earth is your God give him a shout of praise this morning the powerful thing about it in my presentation at Queen for Day the Lord gave me an idea that there's an address for your pain 15391 Balboa Street Southern California was mine can't go there right now but you may have an address of your pain you may have a date on the calendar as I said that day of everything that happened before that and after that you may feel that things in your life have just kind of scattered you. Your heart got broken. Grief showed up. Sickness, betrayal, shame. All these previous things attempted 
to divide you and not make you whole. I love that Peter says in 1 Peter 1, he made us from nothing, which means when we feel scattered in our heart, in our mind, when our life is fragmented, he says, this is nothing. I made you out of nothing. I can put you back together out of nothing. I can pick up the broken pieces of your life and put them back together again. That is the Lord, your shepherd. Someone say amen. You can't resist this appeal of Jehovah Rohi, your shepherd. He says again, I will both search my sheep and seek them out. Isaiah 40. I will deliver them. I will find them in good pastures. I will cause them to lie down. I will seek those which are lost and bring them again, which was driven away. And I will bind up that which was healing for that was broken because I am the Lord. Someone say the Lord is my shepherd. He's got you covered today. He's got your back, as we like to say around here. This man, Christ, will never leave you or forsake you. He is for you. And the psalmist said, I shall not want, which means I shall not lack. That word is lack. It means I don't have to be greedy and covetous over what you have. I have the satisfaction that cares for me when I say to myself, and you say to yourself, the Lord is my shepherd I do not lack there may be things you see as lack in my life but I will not lack as long as the shepherd is close I can lie down in green pastures you see shepherds have written about their sheep because sheep are unruly I mean Jesus was so kind to make a sheep because they're bad come on somebody they follow each other when they shouldn't. The grumblers follow the grumblers. The brokenhearted follow the brokenhearted. The criticizers, oh, come on now, Pastor Rhonda, back up. But I will lie down in green pastures. But one thing the shepherds say, when there is fear of torment, sheep get very nervous. But the minute they see their earthly shepherd start walking among the fold, they calm down because sheep have no defense against predators. Sheep have no way to defend themselves. But they know as long as the shepherd is there. Philip Keller said there was a terrible time of wrestlers and they were going in to sheep pens and killing and coyotes and wolves and he said I slept all night among my sheepfold and the wrestler said we're giving up on Keller's bunch because he doesn't know how to give up on his sheep I'm going to tell you something your adversary backs up every time he sees King Jesus and you declare the Lord is my shepherd give him a praise in this house come on somebody and before we think this is a meek shepherd, and he is meek, this is a weak shepherd, remember that David himself penned the words of the psalm. Our shepherd is fierce, and he is vicious to your enemies. When something is coming against you, I'm going to get to that in just a moment, he becomes his other names that we will look at, the Lord of hosts, the Lord Gamal, the Lord Nisi, the Lord our defense, the Lord our battle cry. I'm going to tell you when David said the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He makes me a table in the presence of my enemies. David is coming from his own experience. What did he say before King Saul in 1 Samuel 17? He said I have been keeping my father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and they carried off a sheep from the flock. I went after it. I struck it. I rescued the sheep out of the lion's mouth. Come on, somebody. I'm going to tell you, King Jesus goes after your enemy. And if for a moment the enemies of your soul think they've sunk their teeth into you, he not only chases them down, but he sees it like David did and kills it, sees it by its hair, struck it. I'm going to tell you, Peter said, your adversary roams around like a roaring lion, but he is no ordinary lion. There is one who is extraordinary. His name is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And he has prevailed. Somebody give King Jesus a praise. Come on. Come on. And he, it's something when you think about, that's what Jesus did at Calvary. He took us as sheep out of the mouth of Lucifer. 
and said, you own this one no more. That's how powerful. He said, I will not fear for you are with me. When sin grabs its teeth into me, when circumstances grab their teeth into me, when pain and worry and frustration, when insecurity grabs their teeth into me, I know King Jesus will come and he will fight for me if I call out his name. Someone speak the name of. Someone speak the name of. Someone speak the name of. Jesus. You see, this thing, I'm going to calm down a minute. The thing about sheep is, shepherds talk about how they'll see those that are, are taking care in the sheep pen, but the shepherds are not good. And the sheep are frail, and the sheep haven't eaten, and the sheep are just like, bah, looking out the, the fence. They're loaded with all kind of mites and bugs and infestation. And they see another shepherd walk by with his sheep that he is lovingly taken care of. Let me tell you something. There is pleasure in sin for a season. But the end of the matter is you'll be standing in the sheep pen of Satan. You will look ragged. You will look out of control. You will look beaten down. And any moment he thinks he can transform you into there. He can't take your soul. But he'll try to put you in his sheep pen so you will look ragged and overwhelmed. But in the moment that you speak the name of Jesus, in the moment that you lift your hands, King Jesus will remove you from that sheep pen and say, this one belongs to me and I will not stand to see them defeated. Hallelujah. The sheep can be dumb. And often shepherds say they will see large herds of sheep on their way. What the sheep don't know is that the king, their shepherd, their earthly shepherd, is taking them to beautiful water, wonderful water. He's leading them beside steel waters. He's taking them, but they're not there. And the shepherds say that they've often seen groups of sheep stop and drink out of muddy water. Drink out of muddy water where sheep have gone before it and, and deposited their manure. Their waste, parasites, germs, all kind of things are put in that water. And the sheep are just thinking, my water's not coming. I'm going to drink from this. How many times do we drink from dirty water? Because we don't want to wait for the water he has for us. We drink from things that are polluted to try to give us refreshment. Pornography, even some entertainment feeding the flesh, all kind of matter of things I could spread out. We all have them feeding our fears so we drink from polluted water. And then we wonder why we feel sick. Often I'll say to the Lord, keep my eyes from seeing things I don't need to see. Keep me from drinking from polluted waters in my moments of fear and grief. Keep me because what King Jesus was doing, this picture over here is my mother's. It was passed down to me. It comes from the real crystal place in Ireland I visited, but someone gave it to her. You see what King Jesus is saying. I have given you the clear water. I have given you. Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him come to me don't go to that ask of me stop going into these other places stop drinking of things that are polluted and distort your soul and drink of me receive the good things I've given you richly all things to enjoy the Bible says but drink of the clear water on the last great day of the feast Jesus himself before Calvary stood up and said if any man thirst let him come to me and he will drink the living water that will never run dry this water will pollute you this thing will destroy you but if you wait for the water that the shepherd has you may be in a waiting game you may feel like you're going in circles today but that's what the shepherd said they often led the sheep in circles to get them to the mountain keep drinking the clear water of the kingdom who do you want to be someone give Jesus a praise look at your neighbor and say the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord says in Jeremiah 2 and 13, my people have forsaken me. They have dug out broken cisterns that can't hold water. Meaning I dig, I'll just make this about me to give you a break. I dig out things to help me, dirty water, instead of waiting for the clear water of truth, the pure and the lovely 
and we dig out things. The psalmist goes on to say in the valley, you know, valleys are funny, dark, perplexing times. You feel in those moments you might be going through, as my friend Joni says, you either just went through or you're going through a valley. And in that moment, you might feel like you've lost favor. If I can just speak to you what I've dealt with in my life. You wonder if God is mad at you. It's a dark night or season of the soul. And the mind itself can make heaven out of hell. But it can also make hell out of heaven. And the wrong thoughts untamed. And in these moments we think we are forgotten. But 2 Timothy 2 and 19 says, He knows those that are His. Even when I can't feel Him, He knows. Psalms 103, 14 says, He knows our frame. Psalms 94, 2 says, He knows the secrets of the heart. No, He knows the thoughts of man. He restores my soul in the dark places He comes. The thief comes to... But He comes... To give life and give it more abundantly. And in that same passage, he said, I know my sheep. You are known by Jehovah Rohi, the shepherd. You see, when you feel frustrated and overwhelmed, he can restore your soul. Shepherds talk about the casting down of sheep. David says himself, why are you so cast down, oh my soul? Hope in God. He understood what cast down meant. What happens with sheep? They get cast down. I'll explain it. But sometimes our soul gets cast down. When your car gets a flat tire, you can't go forward anymore. Can I get an amen? And sometimes at the end of this sermon, we're taking communion. But sometimes our soul needs to be lifted up. But what happens is the shepherd will go to count his sheep. And all of a sudden, he'll see buzzards circling over part of his graze land. And he knows a sheep has gotten off somewhere. Cast down, the sheep has fallen on its back. And because of the weight of their body, they can't get back up. They, they just start getting frantic and frustrated. It's beyond them. They can't do anything. And all of a sudden, the shepherd will grab his, his staff, will grab whatever he has, and he will go running into the grazelands. And he will spot that precious sheep on its back, frailing and frustrated because it wandered off and the first thing it wants to do is to pick it up but it knows it has to circulate it has to rub circulation into its limbs it has to give it strength and then in tenderness the shepherd will say I'm so glad I found you in time I'm going to tell you something King Jesus is never mad when he has to search you out when you're cast down he's never angry he's never frustrated he gave a parable about leaving the 99 and rejoicing over getting you with tenderness all he will say is I'm so glad I found you King Shepherd is his name somebody give him a praise Josh if you come help me I still have some to journey but if you'll come help me David wondered at times why that dark night of soul would come he wondered at times why he would be overwhelmed and out of nowhere you feel helpless you grow weary and you think, why did I wake up today and there's a cloud of depression over me? Why did I wake up today and I feel like I don't matter? Why did I wake up and sometimes you can point it, well, I want to blame this, I want to blame that. There's not always a point of that, but it's always a point that the Lord, your shepherd, comes to pick you up because he sees the vultures. He sees the vultures circling over you. In the spirit realm, he sees those things made invisible by him, those principalities. And they're coming for you because you're cast down. And King Jesus begins to take his staff. This morning he brought you in here to the house of the Lord. He pulled you in by his staff. Sometimes his staff is other people that will pull you in. Sometimes his staff is words that will be said. Jesus became the sacrificial lamb first. And he had the anointing of mercy, which means he crawled into our skin. He felt what we felt, and he did something about it. And when you track his carrying, his ministry all through the New Testament, he's always magnificent and magnanimous. I think that's the way he say that, in his heart for the downtrodden, for the hurting, for the cast down. He says to us, I've been there before. You see, as I said, we say, I'm overwhelmed. I can't do anything about this. I'm cast down. 
There was a, a day a few years ago that Pastor Hank and I were just so cast down. He was fighting a virus, so maybe he had physical reasons. But it was a Wednesday night. I'm going to make this story short because I've got some journey to go here. I went to church mad. You ever gone to church mad? Bad. It's bad when the co pastor gets mad. I wasn't mad at y'all. I was just mad, overwhelmed. Just why? And this is the crazy thing. We had gone through a hundred times worse than whatever it was. I don't even remember what it was, but we were both so mad and overwhelmed. When anything big, we were just so down. Never underestimate that strong people need your prayers and your encouragement because they push and push and push. I came to church, yeah, it was fine. You know, I, don't, I wasn't speaking. I don't remember what happened. Thank God I wasn't speaking. We did something I don't remember. Went out and got in the car, still mad, still overwhelmed, still like, oh, my soul is so downcast. I'm just done. I'm so done. I'm so done. I wasn't done with church. I wasn't done with God. I'm just done. Whatever it was, I can't even remember. And I got in my car, and I did this post on Facebook about how God circles you with songs of deliverance. When you see some of those things from people like us, you think, man, they're feeling tried. But no, we're usually feeling very discouraged. Now, well, let's put this out here and see if it helps somebody, you know. Let's just put this out here. Well, it, it, it went viral and took off, but that's not the big thing. Big thing is I stopped at Cook's Food Store, and I smiled at a man going over to the deli. I smiled real big. I don't know how that smile came forth because, I mean, I was done. And I'd cross back in another direction. I'd say it's a reason to get Skylar something because she's going to stay with me that weekend. And when I did, this man who Pastor Connie knows well, and I can't remember his name, he's been out at the Hope House. I didn't know at that moment that's who he was. And he just grabbed my hands on his buggy. And he starts talking to me. He starts prophesying to me. He actually inspired the song that I used to love, What a Difference You Made in My Life by B.J. Thomas. And right there at Cook's, he sang it. And then he just starts prophesying. I mean, he don't care who's getting their beans and corn. Come on, somebody. He don't care. He's gray, and he paid for it, and he's a warrior. And he just grabbed me by the hands, and he repeated the conversation Pastor Hank and I had had before church. And then he starts singing out of Isaiah 12. He said, the Lord is circling you with songs. I thought, oh, I just posted that on Facebook and he didn't even know that. The Lord is circling you with songs. I didn't even mean it, God. It was a Hail Mary pass to help somebody because I was mad. <laughs> and he starts singing. The Lord surrounds you. I'm thinking, what's everybody in Cook's think? But then it's like, I don't know if you're in this moment, something just circled us and shut us up together. And he had my hands. He wouldn't let me go. He didn't know who I was. And he begins to sing Isaiah 12. You shall draw joy from the wells of salvation. The Lord is mighty to save. He repeated our conversation perfectly and he kept singing. Of course, I'm a big old hot mess in this moment. I can't even remember what I, I think I bought cheese for Skylar because she can eat chips and cheese till Jesus comes back to the earth. And uh, he keeps singing to me. We go over to check out, and I mean, tears are just streaming. I'm paying for my food. Everybody knows me at Cook's. And they said, the old man got you, didn't he? <laughs> I said, yeah, he did. The old man got me. Then we're trying to walk out the front door. That's not enough, Christine. He stands and blocks my way. With joy you shall drink from the wells of salvation. I mean, he is belling out like he's on the opera stage. I'm like, yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm trying to get to my car. i got to go cook dinner for pastor. That was God's staff. Never underestimate when he uses you as the staff to pull someone in. God knew I needed an elderly man who had nothing to gain or to lose by interrupting me to pull me in and say, I am for you. I'm going to tell you something. I cried unto the Lord and he heard out of his holy hill and he answered and he sustained me. Someone give God a shout of praise today. He said, when I walk through the valley, through, everyone say through. If you're going through hell, don't stop. Walk on through. I will not fear all of our mountains geographically. Go search this on your own time. Get on your Google and have a party. All of our great mountains are preceded by deep valleys. And every mountain we're going to is preceded by valleys. Even though I walk. David didn't say even though I sit down and have a pity party in the midst of my valley. No. No. I'm going to keep going. 
Let me tell you, when the going gets tough, you keep going. Don't make a tent in the valley because you may feel like you're circling the same things you've circled over and over again, but King Jesus knows He's leading you to higher ground. Higher ground is coming. Jehovah Rohi, He is your shepherd. Give Him a shout of praise. This anointing oil that we may have some, we may not. But this anointing oil that we carry here, it has a mix of things. David said he anoints my head with oil. The reason he did that, and, and watch me. Parasites would come on the feet of the sheep. And they would move all of the body. Their target was the ears of the sheep. And once they got in the ears, they laid larva. And then the insects would destroy the brain of the sheep. And even as important, would cause the sheep to go deaf. The enemy wants to come, get into your mind. He wants to come, get into your spirit. He wants to come and make you deaf that you can't hear the king. Isaiah 44 says a deluded heart feeds on ashes and it cannot tell in its hand what is truth. You see, when you get into a stronghold of the mind, Paul said, be weary of the wiles of the devil. That's methodos in the Greek. That's a road. The devil travels on a road straight to your mind like insects up the sheep. But you see what the shepherd did. He anointed that sheep with oil. He slathered him. You can just imagine the sheep. Oh, stop it, shepherd. Stop it. You know, up it comes. I'm just greasy. I'm, I'm flowing with oil all up my legs and on my feet and on my head. But the shepherd knew the more oil he put in, the insects couldn't take hold. Every time they try to go up to the brain, they would lose their traction and fall off and they couldn't take up the sheep. I'm going to tell you he anoints your head with oil with worship with the word so when those insects try to get to your head Jesus begins to sing over you and says you're not getting that one someone give King Jesus a praise an anxious worried mind maybe you're dealing with something's going to happen to you a distracted mind distraction I pray over distractions one of my elders said don't be distracted I thought I'm the most focused person on earth humbly but I've understood now more what he was saying to me. Don't be distracted. Because your destiny is at hand. A suspicious mind and judgmental. I've been hurt before. I can't trust people. An unbelieving mind. God really, I can't really count on his promises. And the one that I've dealt with so much in my young life. Self-hatred and self-rejection. And I'm going to tell you Wednesday night, Pastor Tim, uh, not Tim Timberlake said if a hummingbird looks for nectar so it finds it a buzzard looks for dead things so it finds it be careful what you're looking for you will find it and if you're looking to be unappreciated trust me my brain knows this you'll see yourself unappreciated and you'll notice every time someone just unappreciates you you think you feel rejected you'll notice people rejecting you that aren't you see, but that oil, that oil press is, means Gethsemane where Jesus had the costly oil where he pressed in and through that season he brought us oil. I'm going to tell you something. You've been invited to an appointment with an appointment to sit at the table in the presence of your enemies. And it doesn't seem fair. Why should I have to sit with my insecurity? Why should I have to sit with doubt? Why? Because Jesus has an appointment in that appointment. Esther had to sit at the table of Haman. Haman thought he was coming for favor. Rejection thinks it's coming to take the upper hand for me. But Jesus invites rejection and low self-esteem and doubt and insecurity and addiction. Come sit at the table with my people. You think you're coming for favor, but what you don't know, I'm fixing to show up with more favor than my people can imagine. Come on, somebody. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Hang with me five more minutes. An old adage used to be, because i got to do this illustration, that favor ain't fair. Everybody loved to say that back, back in the Favor ain't fair. They loved it while they bypassed you in the luggage line. Come on, somebody. And that bugged me. I'm a, I'm a person that sees God as just. Favor is not a trip to the fair. 
When you spend time with the shepherd at the enemy's table, you realize. You see, we all want to worship like Mary, but we want to hold on to our alabaster box. We want to be wise like Deborah. We want to leave the shade of the tree to go out there and be who God calls to be. We want to be strong like Moses, but we want to deal with difficult people. Can I get an amen from somebody? Favor. Again, favor is not the size of your house, the clothes that you wear. Favor is what you have overcome. Favor is what others see in your life when they hear your testimony. If you feel discouraged, go share your testimony. When I feel overrun, I just go down to a grocery store and get over a bag of lettuce and talk to someone about my testimony. And I'm reminded I'm highly favored because I overcame what others said I could not overcome. You overcame what was said to take you out. But He took you in. Somebody give him a shout of praise in this house. By this I know you have favored me. The psalmist said, because you did not let my enemies triumph over me. Next time someone says you're not favored, if you were favored, this would be happening, that would be happening. It's usually the lies of the devil. You say, I am so highly favored. My oil is fixed to smack you up aside the head. The oil he put in me that I got through the last season I went through. Those things I overcame, that residual anointing is still on me. And it rises to the occasion because what the enemy shouted defeat God said I'm not done with him I'm not done with her somebody give Jesus a shout of praise come on hallelujah Joseph didn't look favored in the pit Elijah didn't look favored when Queen Jezebel chased him Daniel didn't look favored when he slept in the lion's den Esther was the original hunger games and she was a tribute for the people the Israelites were chased by the Egyptians Paul and Silas are in prison. David was betrayed by his son and his mentor. Mary, the mother of Jesus, it said, till the day she died, many believed she had sex outside of marriage and had an illegitimate son. But that didn't stop the favor of God on her. In fact, what did the angel say when he came to her? Hell, you highly favored of the Lord. You better speak that over yourself. I'm going to be really honest. I'm 61. I've stood on some stages I'm not worthy of. I've ministered. I'm not worthy to do this this morning. He's made me worthy. I've ministered. I have my name on. I'm fixing to, through Joni, I'm fixing to go on the A&E Network. My show I did with her, she's bought Secular Time. And one, my show is one of the shows she's putting out there. I'm just so unworthy. And those things are all great. But I still fight feeling unfavored. And often the enemy will paint a picture to you. Because of what you don't have. And, and, and the odd thing is because of what you went through. And sometimes King Jesus has to just let the anointing pour over me as I worship him. And say, say out loud, I am favored. And you know, you kind of start with, I'm favored. I'm favored. Don't say it like that. Until you say it, because there's power in declaration. There's power in your words. And until you say it out loud and you let doubt and fear know, I am favored by the Most High God. I'm favored because King Jesus gave His blood at Calvary. I'm favored because I'm still alive. I'm favored because I've overcome. I'm favored because He is for me and not against me. I'm favored because I've yet to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You may think I'm circling, but I'm I'm going to higher ground. Someone give him praise today. Come on. Someone give him praise today. He's bigger than all of your enemies. Somebody just wave a hand before King Jesus. You see, he invites you to sit at the table. He sets a table for me. What I want to hear in the presence of my peeps. Come on, somebody. In the presence of my BFFs. My 50,000 followers. I don't have that. I just thought it would be fun to say that. I'm gonna, he's going to set a table for me among those that adore me. No. That never did anybody any good. He says, I'm going to set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And the oil upon you is going to flow. I'm going to let you sit and you're thinking, how can God do anything? When insecurity is right here, when fear is right there, when feelings of inadequacy, rejection, my depression, my oppression, my anxiety. Why would King Jesus let them sit here with me? Why? I can't receive my portion, my victory. 
because I'm sitting in the midst of my enemies. I can't get what I think God wants to give me and be who God wants to be in me because I'm sitting in the middle of these things that I battle as every human does. I may have called yours out. I may not have poverty, your past, your sin, your weaknesses, your record, whatever it is. How can he bring me victory? But that's when King Jesus says, I invited these things to sit with you. You think they discredit you, but they validate you. Because I am the one who sets a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Whether they like it or not. You see, King Jesus comes on through. King Jesus comes with that provision. King Jesus comes. The King is coming with that provision, with that promise with that declaration with that deliverance he comes right through the middle of the muck right through the middle of the dirty water right through the middle the king brings my portion the king brings his heavenly host the king brings the power of heaven behind him and he comes he's unafraid and undaunted by these things and he sets before me a portion of high steaming roast beef mashed potatoes corn green beans there's a biscuit and there's a cornbread up here come on somebody come on give Jesus a praise but this merely smells like victory this merely represents my portion and you see when I go to partake of it Those things to the left and the right think they can stop. But the angel of the Lord brings forth a sword because this is my portion. This is your portion. This is the table he prepares. Give King Jesus glory in this house. Come on, give King Jesus. Give King Jesus. Stand all over this building and give the Lord Jehovah Rahi. Your shepherd, your provider, your healer, your deliverer. He's leading you to still waters. He doesn't want you drinking a polluted. He gives you a portion. Somebody let him hear it in this house today. Come on. Come on. As the worship team comes to the stage, we're going to prepare for communion. We're going to put that lid back on that and somebody's going to get a dinner to take home today. I guess, Joel Bonanno, it's yours. You're welcome, sir. Pastor Todd and Michael, if you get the communion trays, they're going to prepare to sing, The Lord is my shepherd. Is how I want to close. We're going to come, and you're going to get communion from these gentlemen. You take the cup, you peel away the top, the little chiclets in the top. It represents the body of Christ. He prepares this table in the presence of your enemies. This is his body that was broken for you. This was his blood that was shed for you. You eat the bread and then drink it. Don't wait for me. You do it. And then I want you to find a moment of worship in your seat and your altars as they begin to sing, the Lord is my shepherd. Come on, team. Come and get your communion. Find a place to stand. Find a place to worship or find a place to sit. We thank you that King Jesus is Jehovah Rohi. The Lord is our shepherd. Lord Jesus, we know that you have our best interest in mind. You fight vultures for us. When we're cast down and flipped over in soul, you come to restore us. When we wander away, you pick us back up and always said, I'm so glad I came and found you in time. King Jesus, you lead us and you are qualified to lead us, to guide us. You have our best interest at mind, Lord. You anoint us with oil so the doubt and the fear and the things that try to bury themselves in our mind. You bring songs of hope and deliverance. Even in this worship time this morning, your anointing has flowed over us. And when we walk out, we walk out with a residual expression of that anointing. We can't see it. We can't touch it. But it is there, Lord. Let us be reminded you are Jehovah Rohi. You are our shepherd. And if earthly shepherds can do all of that, our king is greater and mightier. Thank you for putting us back together. For the ones in this room right now, King Jesus, 
they just feel like they need to be put back together. Lord, would you do that for them? Would you show them a path? Would you let your anointing break the powers of darkness if some have entertained and danced with wrong thoughts and wrong things? Lord, capture their heart once again. Encourage the strong, strengthen the weak, and Lord, and lift us up that we may proclaim, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He will give me refreshment and rest. He has my future. My future is not in the hands of a man or a woman. But in King Jehovah Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Let's give him one more hand clap of praise for his word this morning. Come on, let him hear it. He's worthy of praise and glory and honor.